away we go. Hey YouTube, it's Mytheon here, and I'm just going to do a quick video with Zero here. We're going to go over some of the Flickr system, how to automate A through B, and through C, and D, and so on and so forth, alphabet. Um, this is just going to be a quick video, not going to go too long, but uh, we've had a few questions, so I want to make sure that at least the basics are out there. First things first, though, I want to show you guys there's a different way to get flickers now. You need to build one of these, the Flicker Lure. Provide it with power. I have a mana battery being powered by these three celestial prisms. And give it redstone, and every so often it'll spawn flickers. That's all there is to it. They don't spawn naturally anymore, so now you have to make sure that you spawn them when you need them. Right. First demonstration we're going to do is just basic moving items from A to B using the flicker system. So I'm going to put some red wool into this chest and Zero is going to take over from here and show you guys what you need to do. Hi guys, Zero here. Alright, so this is just going to be a basic move items from this chest, put them in this chest. Nothing special, but the system can do so much more than this. So, first thing you want to do is take an import crystal, they're the yellow ones, and you... Sorry, you put it on the chest. Then you're going to take your export crystal, they're the blue ones, the dark blue ones, and you're going to put it on where you want the item to go. Then you're going to take your crystal wrench, you right click on the flicker habitat with the item transport flicker inside, or flicker focus, sorry. So you right click on that, and then you right click on the, sorry, right click on the crystal, and that will pair the crystal to the flicker habitat. Uh, the, you can do the shift right click with the crystal wrench and it will remember this habitat so you don't have to keep coming back and right clicking it over and over again. So when I link this export crystal, you should now see that inside the chest we start to get red wool. So to expand upon this system, let's say for instance that we have two colors of wool in, in our input chest. Or even three but we only want to transport out the red wool. Well, that's where the set import crystal comes in. It's the red one. Uh, as normal, you attach to the side of the chest, you link it up with the flicker habitat, and then what you do is you right click on it, and that will open up a, a GUI. Inside this GUI, you need to place on an item, and this will tell it which items it can move out of this chest. If it's not in this filter, it will not move it out of this chest. So as you guys can see, the red wool is decreasing, and even if I put it at the end of the inventory where it would scan the other ones first, it's still only moving the red wool. If I take then this blue wool and I add it to the filter list, you'll see that the blue wool starts moving. Ta-da! Very cool. So that is the, the basics of the uh, Flickr item transportation system. However, there's some more stuff we want to show you uh, that I can do. I need my wool. All right. All right. Now, say for instance, you have your two import chests, so two yellow crystals, and now we have a chest over here. And let's say, for instance, we want to keep five pieces of red wool and ten pieces of green in this chest. So what you do is you take your regulate export crystal, that's this purple one, and you put it to the side. You link everything up, and then same with the set import crystal, you right click on the regulate export crystal. Now we'll open up a GUI. Now you can add the items to this GUI, uh, the difference being that with the set import GUI, the items didn't have a count. This one will. So right click to increase, left click to decrease, shift right click to increase by a number of 10, I believe. So we'll say 10 lime wool and 15 red wool. And you see it hit the 10 green and it stopped. And then it's going to hit the 15 red and it's going to stop. So you can regulate what goes out as well as what comes in. Now one more useful uh, feature that uh, we have added with the Flickr system. If you will give me a moment, because I don't have the item in my inventory that I need. Where is it? 
There it is. So, say for instance that you set up a wool farm. You wanted to keep some of the wool in this chest, but you didn't want it to fill up. So what you do is you come over here. Let's oh, wrong crystal. We are currently experiencing technical difficulties. There we go. So you put the import crystal back, and you have one of these set export crystals, and these work the exact same way as the set import, only in reverse. You tell it which items it can put in this chest through the filter. So what shall I use for an example here? Uh, whichever kind of wool was in this chest before. Green wool. Use green wool. Okay. So... Uh, yep, just click. And... Same thing over here, except this one will be for red wool. Okay. Alright, now let's come over here, and let's get rid of this crystal. And let's put on the regulate bidirectional crystal. So what this does is it will act the same way as the regulate export crystal, except this will also allow it to import from this chest. So if we have, say, more than 10 pieces of green wool, it will pull those uh, pull green wool out of this chest until we have 10. If we have less than 10 pieces of green wool, it will put green wool into this chest until we have 10. It's a great way to keep a specific amount and exactly that specific amount. No more, no less. All right, did you pair all of these up? Yes. Awesome. Did you pair all of these? Did you put the... you haven't set up... Well, that's my bad. Sorry, folks. Ten green and fifteen red. Make sure you set your filters. Very important. So now you'll notice that it's started to deduct from this inventory because it is it has in excess of the filter. You'll note that the red is going into this chest. And the green is going, or lime is going into this chest. So not only is it keeping a specific amount in this specific chest, it's sorting it between the other two. That's really cool, huh? All right, we have one more demonstration to show you. That's over here. A little less theory, a little more practical. We're going to show you guys how you might automate something like a furnace. All right, so let's say we're doing this furnace. Let's say we want to cook some beef. Beef it is. So, as before... Import crystal in this chest. Actually, sorry. Set import crystal in this chest. Eh. A export crystal on the top of the furnace. A import crystal on the bottom of the furnace. And a set import or set export crystal on this chest over here. So set import we're going to pull from this chest and this is one of the customizable ones so we're going to put what are we going to do for filters here let's do uh, raw beef in that in that chest okay all right let's put some coal in the furnace you can automate the uh the inserting coal into the furnace but we're just going to keep things simple for now so we have raw beef over here now, the export crystal will put the beef into the furnace. When paired. When paired. The furnace will cook it. The import crystal on the bottom of the furnace will pull the beef, or the cooked beef, out of there. And then we will, have, we will set up this filter over here to accept cooked beef. AKA steak. That too. Okay. So, so go ahead and pair everything up. Get everything paired up. You can fly yeah, in. Yeah, there we go. Shush. And you notice the furnace turns on, and we're starting to get raw beef pulled in through the furnace. So it cooks away, and the steak sits in there for a quick second and gets pulled into this chest. So that's a really basic example of using flickers to move stuff around through an automated process. 
Nice part is, none of this has to be touching. It just has to be within 10 blocks of this flicker habitat. And if you try to link up a crystal to a crystal mar or to a flicker habitat that is out of the range, you will receive a text error letting you know that the range was too great. Yes. So, that's the basics. I know we went through it uh, relatively quick, um, but I figure you can pause and rewind the video and go through it as many times as you need to. What you kind of need to think of this as is it's a little bit different than some sorting systems, but the Flickr Habitat is your main controller, and then import crystals kind of pull into a central network that's managed by this habitat, and export crystals of all types will export out to inventories. Where this system will be really useful for the time being is setting up a single, single operation systems. So for instance, setting up your sorting room, uh, setting up an autom automated cooking station like this one here, uh, doing other small automation tasks. Uh, we will be adding tools later on to allow for a much larger uh, full base wide item transportation and management system, but right now the tools just aren't there to make doing something like that easy. But I hope the early access or the early look at the Flickr system will give you guys plenty of ideas for the future. The last thing that I want to make sure we touch on is some of you may have noticed that it moves, uh, the, the Flickr system moves items around kind of slowly. There are ways to both increase the speed at which it moves items as well as the quantity of items that are moved. And it's a relatively simple process that involves a simple multi block around your controlling Flickr habitat. The first thing you're going to want to do is put an empty Flickr habitat anywhere adjacent to it. It can be the left, the right, the front, the back, the top, the bottom, as long as it's touching. And what you can do is you can take flickers in a jar and put them in the adjacent habitats. Now, currently the flicker habitat will respond to, do, to two other uh, flicker upgrades. The first one is the arcane flicker, and adding these guys will increase the amount that it moves at a time by 32. So the first one you add in will actually boost it up to 32. The second one that you add will boost it to 64. It can go beyond that, but there are very few inventories. There are no inventories of vanilla, and there are very few modded inventories that allow you to store more than 64 items in a stack. So you'll probably only want two of these guys. Yeah. So if you want to go ahead and put one of those in, he is in there. You'll notice that the crystal also points at the central one, which indicates visually that it is an upgrade as well. There's also one other thing you may want to note is that there are placement rules regarding the flicker habitat. So for instance, if I were to try to place another flicker habitat right here, it'll pop off. That one actually shouldn't have popped off. Bug. So that's how you can increase the amount that it moves and then in using the same logic you can uh, take a lightning flicker which I have in right. a jar. Oh, handy. And that will increase the frequency at which they are moved. So you can have a little bit more granular control. Each light, lightning flicker will increase the speed by about 33% of the previous increase. I know that sounds really complicated, but what you really need to know to get, or what you really need to take away from that, is that adding more than three is pretty much useless. And each one that you add after the first will not be as effective as the first one. So we've got one arcane and one lightning attached to this. What I'd like to do is just set up a really simple demo to show you uh, the difference in what it moves. So I'm just going to break this uh, set import. Regular import? Yeah, just regular import, regular export uh, into here. And I'm going to get rid of that. Okay, so that's all paired up. So it's just going to move everything from this chest into this one. And it should do it nice and quick. You notice it's taking half a stack at a time, and you can see half a stack at a time being inserted into here. So a relatively simple upgrade can greatly expand your transfer capabilities. So we, that's, uh, that's about all we wanted to show you for right now. It's just a quick and dirty tutorial. I'm sure the um, automation experts out there are already thinking of ways that you can use this in wonderfully broken ways, and I can't wait I to will. see <laughs> what you guys come up with. But. Uh, yeah, you can do. This is all meant to be pretty early game access. The resources to make these aren't very expensive, and they're found pretty early on. You should be able to get something like this going within your first hour of gameplay or so. 
So, uh, yeah, this is that's going to wrap up our video. This is Mythion signing off. This is Zero signing off. And thanks for watching, guys. Whee!